Okay, this is right. Okay, cool. So what's up, guys? I'm Doc, SampleKings.com, and this series starts today. It's a long series. It's how to use the MPC2 software. Got that? It's going to be pretty long. I'm going to cover every feature in the software and how to use it. This is the first of the series. I need you to subscribe now to us here in YouTube. It'll make it easier for you to see it and go over it. If you don't know this software, I'm going to teach you every part about it. Also, you can also join us at Sample Kings. You can join the club over there. And of course, we can teach you directly through Zoom or you want to do QuickTime or a phone call. You get my phone number, of course, and we will help you totally whatever you need to have done. So look, it's pretty simple to do. If you need help, it's here, but also it's going to be right here in YouTube. Any questions? Below, please put them down there. Um, what else, Dippy? Let's forget that. Let's get busy. Let's do this. Now, this is the view you're going to have of your MPC2 software when it loads up. This is going to be it right here. Now, you'll see this, and you can see here we have project templates on top. And those are all the templates. I can have an empty project open it up here. Here we have the demos. And I go to the end here, and there's no empty project here, right? And then here we have open a recent project. These are recent projects I've been doing or working on. I can load them up quickly and then work on them and actually put them away also. But when I get through working on them, they will appear down here in the order of what I did last. So this is the last one I did. This is furthest from that point. So it makes it easy for me to find a project and you too as well. Now, if I come and open up a project up, I may want to open up a template, just get some stuff to work with, to play with, right? So I'll come to here, I'll say I want to do trap. I'll double click that and it loads up too. I can also press the load project button, it will load as well. We got a progress bar here, we'll see what's loading up and here it is, it's all loaded. Now, once it does load up, you will see the pads right here. We have 16 pads. Here's a bank. And you'll see is 1 through 16 here for our banks. So I can hit the pad here. And you'll see it rise up here. And I get right there. See that? That's all the pads. Here's 16. And here's 1. Those are 16 pads. Now, what's really cool, too, is that I have a browser open here, this window here. I can close it off, too. And now we see a full view of what's going on. We, now we can see we have 22 measures. Now, if I don't like this, I can go back here and say, well, look, you know, I want to check this out with the actual demo tied to it. This is simple enough. I'll come here to New Project. It comes right here. Okay, and I'm looking for this trap thing, right? So here's the trap right here. That's the one that matches it. And then we see that right here. I will click on this one. Matter of fact, I'll click on it, get the red border here. Now I'll load it by pressing the load project button. And now we're loading. It's our progress bar. And we're loading the samples up. And the sequence. And this is it right here. To play it back, I go up to the top, up here to the top right here, and press play. I can bring the audio down here. And just stop it right there. I can press stop and stop it here and play here. And play from the top right here. So to check out a lot of these demos is great if you're first starting out just to see how the software works of course I can see what the sounds are here everything's here now I can also come back to here let's new project let's don't save now we're back here again if I have a recent project I've been working on, I can come out and see. Got a recent project I'm working on. Let's go back to here. Let's try this one. It loads up. I double clicked it again. It loads up. Uh, 
that's pretty cool instantly loads we got no problem with it and if i want to just go back here again i just go well you know i want an empty project forget this i'll come here i'll press empty project and now we're fully loaded up now the first thing you should probably do once you get started and you should do it probably once a week or something at least is to check your software i normally come into here i'll do like check for updates i'll click here whoa you are running the latest version of mpc software now if you want to see the current version that i'm actually running i will come to here and press about mpc and it comes up and i'll see it here i'm at 2.11.9 perfect i just click on that and i'm back to where i'm at here and now we can start doing a lesson now before you get started the first thing you need to know is how to use your browser so i'm gonna move my cursor down here and here in the bottom you know that of course this little question mark here means help so if i come to here it's my help so this is the quick help and if i press h that's on now if i get right here this is my file browser so i have file browser right here here i have my expansion browser and here we have the media browser let's check this out so i'm gonna go right here to my file browser and now my file browser opens up now this is just my browser and this is my media browser let's start with our file browser now here in my file browser i like to search for items on my hard drive that i can use in my session meaning projects sequences uh could be programs uh presets for effects um samples and then the folders that have everything in them so you'll see here for example um we have folders on top of here one two three four five right and so these folders are set up to be at a location on my hard drive that i have certain files i want to look at always or just files i keep in place now for example i put my cursor there you get to the help thing again it says akai right and so I can come to here, it says Akai, which is cool, but you'll notice here, this gives me the location right here below these um, filters, where I have project, sequence, program, preset, sample, and all. So it says Akai, that's cool. So it comes here, and we'll see this. This is what's in that folder. The Akai folder has essentials. MPC beats MPC. Now, another good feature here is I can do a search but what I prefer to do here also is go right to here. I have browser options. And this is the beauty of having that help button down here set up. That way you can see what's going on. Browser options. I click right here. And when I browse, it'll show me file size. It'll show me modified date. It'll show me created date, included subfolders, and hide project data folders. So I can either turn these off, turn this off here. You see what happens in modified. Let's get modified gone. Let's go to get modified out. So I just got rid of size and modified. Date created doesn't bother me, but I do keep it on because sometimes I'm looking for a file that I may have done uh, a track maybe two or three days ago or a month ago, you never know. So I'll come down to here and I'll just say, okay, I'm in essentials. I open essentials up and we have these folders and the subfolders here, right? That's kind of cool. So I like that. So I come to here. We have effects. Nothing's in effects. I'll go back up one. So see that we can go up and down from here as well. I go to documents. Nothing there. I'll go back up one. That's good. I go to frameworks. Nothing's here. I'll go back up one. I'll go back up again. Let's go to MPC beats. I go to here. I see my resources here, right? I can go to, let's see, uh, content. Let's open content up. MIDI control scenes. MIDI, oh, this is chromatic scales. So we see we have content here, and this is for controller, that's content. We have progressions, I can put progressions in here. MIDI learn is here. ARP patterns, synthesizers. These are synthesizers right here. This is a whole bunch of stuff right here. MPC 60. I have a lot of old MPC 60 stuff. I am an older MPC user, <laughs> and I have I keep everything pretty much, and so I'll have tons of MPC 60 sounds in here from the beginning of time. 
and of course there's a bunch of other stuff it's air so as you can see here a lot of stuff is stored within the system on our hard drives but we have access to it through our file browser okay so now we're going to look at these other folders here as you can see i have the folders that selected and i have items in each one of these folders i can always change anytime i want to change to also and find another folder and put it right there as well now these folders have stuff in them like for example this is user shared chromatic fire library samples drums now of course these are from a different company but they're still samples so when i look at this i have programs selected here right so i see no program so i need to come down to here i want to see samples i can't I just see folders you can see all you're going to see is folders here so we have no way to filter out what's in that folder so i open the folder up first and now i see there are no projects no sequences uh no programs presets or well, we do have samples and that's it and that's all we have and i select all it shows you what's in there all we have in here are just samples i can click on this these are just samples pretty simple stuff now i can go also let's say back to another folder here uh, let's try drum groups and here we have drum groups now i'm already in this section of all so i can see everything that's going to be in there and i come to here now i can go let's say this folder here i see we have waves and rex files open up rex let's open up uh electro let's see this is this is what Turn my volume up here. These are Rex files. Control my volume here, of course. I can stop it here easily. And so I can hear Rex files too. This is really important to realize because you can get some Rex files, which I have actually from Reason. But you want to know what you can play, and Rex files will work here too as well. And of course, the location appears here. Now, as I said before, of course, we can come to here. We'll see this here. We have our show modified. I may want to show file size. See the size of your samples. I prefer to do this always, actually. I'm going to get rid of a few if I don't I think they're too big or there might be something wrong with them. I always check my files and sizes. And this essentially is my file browser right here. And that's how we use it. Okay, so next I want to look at my expansion browser. So as you can see, once I put my cursor here, it says expansion browser. I can select the X key, which I'll do right now. And there we go. Expansion browser is open. I can also close it as well with the same key. Open or close it. Makes no difference. And so here I can see an expansion pack and look at it or load something in. So for example, this is Pad Thai Deluxe. And this is our expansion browser. And I can see here I have programs, samples, sequences, and projects. Only one project in there. See that? So I can come to here actually and say I want to look at a program. I come to here. If I want to hear these programs, I can come right to here. Can turn it off too as well. Turn it off as well there. So if I want to load this in, it's pretty simple. I will go to sequences. That's just the program. If I load the program in, I will only load the sounds for the program, but not the sequences that make that program work. So I'll come here. I know it's boom bap. And I know I heard this one right here. Now if I touch that, you won't hear it at all, right? So I want to load it in. Let's select this again. I'll just double click that. And now it loads in to the system. Still loading. Now once it does load and everything's in there, of course, we're back to the bright view, I can go to here and sort of like move this part of my grid in using this triangle right here. I can see the entire range of it. Next, I can come and play. I'll press play up here. Stop it. The samples are still playing. 
but you get the idea of what we have here. Well, it's pretty long, but it's easy to load stuff in. And if I want to get some of these sounds, I can do that too as well. But it's always cool to listen back to what's going on in the project. Let's meet that real quickly. So, what I can do also, I can go to here. And this is my media browser. And once I get to my media browser, I have the ability to see all my expansions. So I see all my expansions here, right? This is every one of the expansions I have already. And what I can do is I can look at everything from every single expansion pack. For example, you'll now see programs. I can see presets, none. Projects, all the projects appear here. All the sequences appear here. All the samples appear here. So this is kind of cool. I can just look at everything and load what I want at any, at any point in time, really. And it helps me to actually find something I'm looking for. And it'll help you also to look for basses, drums, snares, whatever you're looking for, you're going to find it here. For example, these are basses, these are drums, come with drums, there are drums right there. Now the drums load, okay, we got percussion, we got guitar. I have 808, acoustic, bells, block, bongo, everything's here. Rim shot, kick, hi-hat, everything's here, including snare. Let's go to snare right here. And so how many snares we got in there? This is going to be ridiculous. A nice, huge amount of snares. That's the beauty of having the expansion packs. If I can go back, look through an expansion pack, load up a sound, or hear a sound back, and then sort of like scroll down, find something else. That's the beauty of having this expansion pack, and then having a media browser helps you to search for whatever you want. And of course, we can go from sample, to sequence, to project, to preset, to program, but there's no all selection for filter. Got that? It's pretty simple to do. Now you can also do a search right here. I'm looking for 808 drums. I can say, well, I want to get 808 drums. Pretty simple to do. I just go right here and it starts to populate with the number of 808 drums that are in the program section because I'm in program. If I go to sequence, then I have 808 still selected here and my 808 is still in my search option here. I see a bunch of 808 stuff. And it's all right here for me. Such an easy way to operate. And plus, there are so many sounds once you have a third amount of expansion packs. And you can go right to here, too, and scroll down. What's down here? And everything says 808. So it's a great way to look for sounds within the media browser. Now, of course, I can come access out, too. If I want access out, boom. Exit all out right there, right? And we're back to where we started from. Programs and stuff are right here. Go to here. Now we see all programs. So it's all available. But one thing for sure, when you X this out, you might still just see 808. So what you want to do is go to here. Clear that out, of course. And now we can just search what we want to search for. Let's search for projects. And we have projects here we can search to as well. So it's great to look through the media browser to look for other sounds you might want to use in your project.